live. Going live. Think we might be live, Baloo. What's going on, man? I know I'm alive. What is uh, market's going dumping. on? People are freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> lots of fear, lots of panic, lots of negative news and out? speculation to the downside. Are you freaking ah, no. out? No. No, I'm not. Um, you know, I had uh, a pretty solid plan for how I want to handle this trade, and it's kind of an all or nothing type trade. Um, I have my stops down at 41K, didn't hit 41K. If it gets stopped, that's going to suck because now I got to look for an entry, and entries are always the hardest part. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, it, it did come as a bit of a surprise. You know, I thought we were kind of breaking through that area of 50K resistance. But we were breaking through the area of 50k resistance with too many DGENs in their leveraged longs. And uh, well, yes, sir. You know, this to me is a yeah. leverage trading crash. Nothing more, yeah. nothing less. And we will explain that to the audience. I know uh, many of our community are here. Most of you are gamers. Uh, what we're going to do today, people, is uh, obviously this is a technical analysis show. We're going to look uh, at the charts. I know many of you are traders as well. Uh, one of the main reasons I like having Blue on the Hard Forking channel is this guy obviously has a very good knowledge of technical trading, but he also understands the fundamentals. And for me, most importantly, has a wonderful philosophical view of this market and life. So we're going to be talking on all three of these subjects today. But for the traders uh, that are tuning in, uh, Blue, let's have a look at some charts. But listen, stay with us, people. We're going to be talking about quite a bit today. It's been a pretty crazy day on the market. So, Blue, I'll hand it over to you, sir. Uh, I believe we'll look at BTC first up. Sure. Can you see my screen? Can indeed. Okay, cool. Um, so, yeah, we were looking really healthy, heading to the upside, higher highs, higher lows, broke through the 50K resistance, but we never got much of a dip. Uh, the big money never took positions. If they missed the, the breakout, they never took their positions. And the retail traders kept adding into their leverage. So we had to move up. Uh, who's to say what caused the trickle effect of, uh, of the initial dump? But uh, we triggered some stop losses. The stop losses triggered liquidations. And the liquidations triggered a uh, market-wide correction of you know, in excess of 15% in most assets. So, you know, it is what it is. I'm still macro bullish. I think the fundamentals are very, very strong. And, uh, you know, we can actually take a look at some of the on-chain data as well. Um, most notably, it's just the exchange flows. Uh, this is kind of an interesting chart that I want to share. Um, and this is the Bitcoin balance on exchanges. This is indicating the the balance that it's an average, it's an index of all of the uh, holdings of every exchange. Now, we're always looking at supply and demand. Cryptocurrency is kind of an in-demand space, period. You know, institutions are, are entering, there is demand for Bitcoin, and the supply on the exchange is dropping. There's less and less available. It's uh, either heading to a ledger or it's heading to a corporate uh uh, treasury, uh, it's heading to funds. Uh, it's no longer on the popular retail exchanges. So why that's important is if there's less of these things to trade, a lot of people think that, you know, money in equals price go up, but it's, it doesn't really work like that. What decides price is the order book, the order book, that, that little square on your, uh, on your exchange portal or, or whatever it is that you're looking at that has all the flashing numbers of price. That's, uh, buyers matched up with sellers. So if there is not a lot of supply and there's not a lot of selling side and there's a lot of people wanting to buy, the price can go up very, very quickly. So there's a lot of fundamental factors uh, as to why I believe that this is just, you know, we needed to flush out the leverage. We always need to flush out the leverage. A lot of these exchanges aren't going to want to honor a lot of these leveraged positions if we do get a successful breakout and they manage to hold those. You know, the exchange has to honor that. They're incentivized to not. <laughs> so the Lou, I think on our I think on our last I think opponent. on our last show uh, I didn't actually bring up the the chart, but uh, I was talking about the percentage of people that were long as opposed to short, and it was over sixty five percent. When I see that, yeah. I, I worry, uh, and I actually shorted back then. I thought, okay, we're going down, 
uh, you know, the, the people are over leveraged. Um, this thing's going down and it, it did have a little, little uh, pullback. Uh, but obviously this was what I was anticipating. Uh, I was a week right. early, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I mean, for Timing's me, this, difficult. This, I, I think you're hundred percent correct. This, this is, this is these leveraged exchanges, which make up a huge percentage of the trade uh, in these assets and people were long very the majority were long yeah. all, all the all the new retail traders were yeah. long guess what happens boom long squeeze yeah so unfortunate little blip in the road you know it does take time to repair these types of things as investor confidence does become shaken anytime there's a shakeout in price all of the reasons as to why start to present themselves in the news so we're already seeing fud against uh you know Coinbase being uh, investigated with the SCE and, uh, you know, they're they're calling uh, yields, you know, uh, loan yields, securities. And so, it, I don't know, it's just, it's a mess out there when the price goes down, the FUD starts flying. But um, I'm really, you know, I'm not worried. I'm not worried. I still got my position and uh, holding true, not taking profits, not doing anything. It's, it's either a, it wins or it loses. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, a, a big part of what we do in the space now is is obviously centered around gaming. Uh, and what I really like about that is in in that particular sector of blockchain, which is really dominating the space. I mean, Axie is actually making up a huge percentage of the actual turnover uh, in all of crypto now. Um, and one of the reasons for that is, you know, you've got an asset uh, that effectively you know, it, it, you can't get taken out on leverage. <laughs> so, you right. know, uh, that, that, that's that's a big advantage here. Uh, I think it's going to hold up well uh, when we do see a, a bear market. Uh, so, you know, a big, big part of, of my efforts with, with hard forking is to grow that gaming community. Um, you know, from an investment thesis, uh, that's primarily where I'm at now. Uh, don't get me wrong. I still like to trade around uh, 5% of my portfolio. I view it as a bit more fun than anything else. And as a crypto culture brand, still 60% of the people that are in crypto are here to trade. So, you know, it is something I, I like to keep my finger on the pulse. But, you know, I really like your content. I think you're a good mix of, uh, you know, the technicals and the fundamentals. So we're definitely going to talk more on the fundamentals uh, today, people. But for those of you that are here, uh, for some technical analysis, we'll we'll get into that first. So, uh, could we have a look at a uh, an ETH chart, Blue? Tell us uh, what what you see happening there. Yeah, ETH actually looks like it's in a not bad spot. You know, if we were to retest an area of support, it's very nice to retest a previous breakout. So we just recently broke past this consolidation, and we're now you know trying to test that general area. You know, the market's kind of bearish right now. And like I said, it usually takes a few days to regain investor confidence and, and kind of limit the supply side to come in. But if we do manage to hold support around, you know, 34 to $3,300 in Ethereum, I think it's just an, it's a good spot. You know, we're, we're ticking to the upside, making higher highs, making higher lows. We had this very nice breakout, uh, a test, a very aggressive test uh, but it's structurally a lot more sound than what we're seeing in a lot of other assets. Um, another one, well, actually Cardano is kind very, of just very quickly spot. on just just very quickly on ETH Blue. I actually moved the majority yep. of my portfolio into it uh, yesterday. Um, okay. Why did I do that? I, you know, for me, I I, I view this as kind of like owning a piece of the internet, um, and you know. Is there's some sleepless yeah. nights, especially trading multiple coins, uh, trying to figure out what's happening on a million projects. So, you know, a, a lot of my focus now, obviously I've got my Bitcoin hold, but uh, ETH has become a, 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 I hate to say this to my Bitcoin audience because it was a Bitcoin maximalist for a long time, but my ETH holdings now surpass that of, uh, of Bitcoin. Sorry, Bitcoin. Yeah. Hey, you know, if ever there was a time in the market cycle, it's usually the later end. So I, I do think that Ethereum is going to start outperforming for the duration of the cycle. If we do get this continuation that we're all waiting for, it, to me, it's a no brainer that Ethereum is going to continue 
regardless of the freaking gas fees, regardless of anything, you know, it's, it's got a huge network effect. And that's how we value cryptocurrency. We don't value it in, you know, earnings. We don't value it in the team. We don't value it in tweets. We value it in its network adoption. And the two largest networks that we have are Bitcoin, massive network, huge adoption, and Ethereum, massive network, huge adoption. There are competitors that are gunning for, you know, uh, trying to be a better better Ethereum, and they have the ability to do so. But as far as their network adoption, Ethereum is still way ahead, way ahead. Yeah, actually, you're 100% correct. Now, you know, on that note, it's not 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 something I sort of talk extensively about. But uh, prior to getting into crypto uh, from the uh, mid 90s, I, uh, I set up a business back then that was uh, basically to, to roll out the, the network infrastructure. So I've had a I've had a front row seat watching uh, that happen. Uh, now some some really interesting statistics around that. So my company really really took off uh, in around sort of ninety seven ninety eight. Uh, went from me working from my my literally from my bedroom with a well, it wasn't even a mobile phone. It was you know the the old, the old phones. Mobiles were only just arriving. Um, but you know back then in nineteen ninety seven, there were hundred and forty million people that we're using the internet in 1997. Today, we've got 140 million people using crypto, exact same number. So I, you know, you can absolutely compare where we're at in the, in the evolution of crypto to the internet. There's one big difference, people, and this is something you, I really want you to listen closely to. The internet from 19... 19- 90 through to uh, 2000 grew at 60% a year. So if we take that number of 140 million users of the internet in 1997 with that growth rate, compare that to crypto, which has a growth rate of double that. Crypto is growing at 130% a year. So it's got the exact same amount of users that the internet had in 97, but it's growing at twice the rate. So if you extrapolate that forward, people, that means that we're going to have 1 billion users of crypto by the year 2024, that, and that is just around the corner. That is how fast we're growing here. So on a day like today where you know many of you have lost 25% of the value of your, your tokens, I want to tell you this. You're, you've made the right bet being in crypto. It's not financial advice. This is just basic macroeconomics here. You are very early to an industry that is only going in one direction and up. So, you know, don't freak out. The, these, these shakeouts here, this is leveraged traders getting cleaned out, but a lot of other people who, who, who maybe can't afford to be in some of their positions, you're also the ones selling. You're giving your money back to the big boys. That's what this whole game is. So be freaking careful and understand that you've got to control your emotions on a day like today. Back to you, Baloo. Yeah, I went... When you're in a space that moves so fast and there's a news story every single day, there's something to digest, there's something to process every single day, it's really easy to get lost in the minutia of the day to day and you can really lose track of where you are and how quickly you got there. I'm actually just going to flip back over to BTC right now and I'm going to go down here and I'm going to do year in frame. Okay, so uh, let's squeeze that down a bit. Let's go. Yeah. Year in frame. So the price a year to go, a year to go, eh, the price a year ago today was $10,000, 10 grand. Bitcoin was at $10,000 one year ago today. So, you know, the day to day is nice. You know, the trading is nice. Uh, the opportunities present themselves more often in crypto than they do in any other market. But if you're not also investing, if you're if you're trading your whole stack, um, you're going to go fucking nuts. Pardon my French here, but you are going to go nuts because uh, it moves so volatile. You got to take the wins with the losses. You know, uh, volatility is a two way street. So if you can't handle these downsides, you know, you don't really deserve the upside. Um, understand that uh, this is a game. People are playing it. This is a big thing that is happening to this world and there are people who are very powerful who are going to who see what's happening and they're going to at least at a very minimum be a buyer when you're selling in fear correct and those powerful people just took 
$2.7 billion off of other inexperienced traders today, just today, $2.7 billion. So, you know. It's a heck of a lot of Bitcoin. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, you know, I, I think a show like this is important. It's it's here to educate you. Um, you know, it's, it's just part of what what we do on this crypto culture channel. Uh, you know, understanding these charts is 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 integral to to you know really having having an understanding of the whole space and exactly what Blue has just said there. You know, when you zoom out and look at these bigger pictures, that's uh, that's just as important as is understanding that it, you know the day to day of the of these swings. Um, that and being in control of your emotions. <laughs> yeah. Easier said than done. Oh, yes. Time in market does kind of quell your emotions. You you eventually do become this soulless robot. So it's, <laughs> hang in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, I actually took a position in Solana today, Baloo. It's one we have looked at uh, quite a lot. Um, you know, the, 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 the reason I, uh, move more into Ethereum is, yeah, for me, it's getting to that point where, um, I'm just going back to right back to fundamentals here. I mean, I know, you know, a lot, a lot of my friends who are uh, punching the air about ADA. Um, but for me, that, that fact that everything is going to be settled or the majority of things are going to be settled on Ethereum. Yeah. The gas fees are high, but what you got to understand We've got all these other layer twos, uh, you know, the Maddox, there's a heap of yeah. them out there now. Um, this is part of the Ethereum ecosystem. So while you might get that ability to buy and sell an NFT or whatever on, on some other blockchain and it's lightning fast and, wow, why the hell would I use Ethereum? There's one very simple reason for that. And, uh, you know, I was trying to explain this to uh, to some people earlier today. It's It's... It's almost like being stuck in a room with 10 other people and you can do things really quickly with them, but they're the only 10 people you're ever going to get to hang out with. Uh, you know, if you're part of that Ethereum ecosystem, that really is another layer on the internet. You're going to be able to do absolutely everything. So, if, you know, for, for uh, cheap gas fees and being able to do things quickly, that's what these layer two solutions are bringing. Um, you know, we've also got uh, Ethereum becoming a deflationary asset now. Um, you know, we, we've got uh, proof of stake coming up. Uh, it's only going to get better. So yeah, I've, I've moved a lot of my stack into into that project. But as I say, I uh, I see Solana uh, having some glory days. I don't think they're over. Uh, so yeah, I took an entry on it today. Do you think I made a bad move? Um, I think if you're thinking, you know, cycle to cycle a lot of these assets are going to show higher appreciation. Um, if Bitcoin can break past 65K uh, and do something similar to what it did in previous cycle in ter- uh, previous cycles in terms of percentage gains, we're looking at you know anywhere from 100 to $250,000 Bitcoin. If we have 100 to 250,000 Bitcoin, I don't think you're going to be at all upset with your, you know, 150 160 dollars solana it's going to be probably you know at a zero <laughs> mm. 1600 solana or something um but yeah you know the again we go back to those uh fundamentals of use case and uh network effect solana is being used it's being used heavily it is slick i don't know if you have the phantom wallet but it's a fantastic wallet. It integrates really well with a lot of the websites. I just bought a NFT on Star Atlas this morning, um, bought a spaceship. They were way cheaper than I thought they would be. So I was like, yeah, I'll buy a spaceship. <laughs> you're leaving us? You're off to the planet blue? Is that what you're saying? I got to I gotta get out of here. <laughs> or I'm more so just embracing the concept of the metaverse. You got, you got room for but one yeah, more? Uh, Solana's... <laughs> it's a two-seater so we'll see <laughs> take, take a wife mate i'll be okay here yeah <laughs> um so yeah you know it's i i always go back to use case are people using it and it's not just like my own thesis of how i assign value it's it goes back to supply and demand we have assets that are becoming less and less available and we need that factor of demand to push it forward. What's the biggest driver of demand on Solana right now? Ah, it's it's NFTs. It's it's the NFT craze. It's minting. It's 
it's a whole bunch of stuff that, you know, in my opinion, is probably quite overinflated, but demand is demand. People buy for whatever reason, you know, like people make flip sneakers for a living. I have no idea what it, you know, how to do that, but people do it and they make big money flipping sneakers, you know, don't get too caught up in trying to figure out why there's demand, just identify demand and there's serious demand for Solana. Mm. Yeah, true, true. And uh, it's interoperable with uh, the Ethereum network also, correct? Uh, that I have not heard. So that would be uh, news to me. Yeah. Um, you can't, you but can't, you, I can haven't, bridge, you I... can bridge from it. So you're not, you're not an okay. island. So they, they integrate. Okay. Yeah. And you need to do that. You know, um, any project that's kind of not taking that into account is missing an opportunity to latch on to the network effect. But Ethereum's got a lot of people on board. So, you know, integrating with Ethereum not only helps Ethereum reduce its gas fees, it just makes the whole network grow. And it, it it's just, you know, so much about cryptocurrency is about community. Community is a network. So mm -hmm. if you integrate with the largest network, you just grow the community. And that's a lot of projects need to keep that in mind and, and understand that it's a very vital part that you at least figure out a way to talk to Ethereum. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, uh, just sort of case in point, if you look at what uh, some of the things we do in the space, you know, we're, we're, we're building out this, uh, this play to earn community, uh, you know, on a daily basis, I talk to people in probably 20 different countries, we, we, we exchange value, it's, it's seamless. Uh, and Ethereum plays a role in all of that. Uh, that is, you know, to me, uh, it is another layer of the internet, you can almost think of it as the internet and owning it, owning Ethereum is like owning that infrastructure. Um, you know, all these other things that sit on top of it are the, the applications or the decentralized applications. Uh, yeah, you, you know, you hear some of these other YouTube channels, you know, 100x, da-da-da on these things. But uh, they're on top of that layer. So uh, Ethereum right. needs to win for 90% for of the space to, to win as well. So, you know, yeah, I can probably make... Uh, quicker gains, uh, punting on some of that other stuff. And believe me, I have a flutter on them, but uh, the majority of my stack is in, in Bitcoin and Ethereum. Own the base layer, people. Uh, we're just getting started here in crypto. And uh, if, if crypto wins, the big winners are Bitcoin and Ethereum. End of story. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. But how about some of those things on top of those base layers, Baloo? Have you got any uh, got any gems or are, are there any charts? I mean, damn, it's it's kind of tough today with a twenty five percent correction to be looking at a chart going. Yeah. This one's ready to break out. <laughs> what I would say is, if there are projects out there that you have been chomping at the bit to buy, and you had a strategy like you're just telling yourself, "Hey, if we get a dip, I'll buy." Just remember what you told yourself. A lot of people, they forget. It's like, oh, God, if we get a dip in Ethereum, I'm buying. I'm buying. I hope you're and then about the to dip comes and nobody buys. Buy Are you finally going to buy Matic? Is that what you're going to No, gonna I'm not going to. No, I, I'm not going to buy Matic. <laughs> <laughs> not because I don't like it. And you know what? That's a really good exercise as well for a lot of people that find themselves over diversified out there. Um, I really keep my portfolio small. I am not a believer in diversification. Um, there are too many projects for me to actually own. So I'm happy to just watch the space develop. I'm happy to watch uh, adoption of Matic. I'm happy to watch all these things happen while I still have my investments. If I spread myself too thin, I can't control what's going on. I can't make adjustments when necessary. Um, so no, I'm not buying Matic, but I think, you know, if you are one of those individuals who's been looking for a position to get into Matic, today's the day, you know, you got a, you got a retracement back down to the bottom of the trading range here, um, wicked off good demand. It might, you know, tick back down to the bottom before you get a, a turnaround, but it's, it, we got a dip. If there's stuff that you've been looking at, here's your dip. We're in a bull market. Couldn't agree more. And, you know, for me, the narrative, well, you know, another reason that it, from, from a fundamental point of view, um, you know, the the level of understanding of, of, of people, uh, you know, it takes, I don't know, probably six to 12 months before you, you've really got that confidence to be jumping, you know, from a layer one to a layer two, you know, you, that whole fear of, oh my God, where, where's my, uh, where's my money gone? 
uh, those things get alleviated once you've actually gone in and tried it. And, you know, if the, the issue for Matic is there, there is that initial fear, you know, how do I do this? You know, how, how do I actually use this? Yeah. Network? Once you're there, uh, you know, you look back and you're like, damn, that was easy. And, you know, and, and until Ethereum 2.0 is, is in full flight. And even then, you know, these, these layer two still absolutely have a, a role to play. And I, only, I, I think they'll only get bigger and bigger. They are part of the Ethereum scaling solution. A lot of people just can't quite wrap their heads around that. So, you know, for me, once again, I'd say I'd have, I think I have 5% of my portfolio of Matic. I don't trade it. I've bought it. I'm, I'm holding it for, you know, the foreseeable future. I see you have, uh, yeah. you've got Cosmos up there, Atom. A lot of people have been talking about this lately. I, I think primarily because it's one of those ones that hasn't seen the huge pop off. Uh, what, do you, what do you got to say? Yeah, on this Cos chart? Uh, Cosmos, this is one I'm just keeping an eye on. So this is my, uh, this is my, I got the, these four here are like the layer twos. So I've got Luna, I got Matic, I got Polkadot and I got Atom. So I'm just keeping an eye on the layer twos. And the reason that I do this, um, these side-by-side -side comparisons is I compare structure and I want to see uh, leaders in structure. Hate to tell you, Sean, but uh, Matic's kind of lagging. <laughs> uh, the leader here is Luna. So Luna is the one that I'm more, uh, if I was to take a position new, I'd be looking at Luna for a position because it's the one that's kind of leading. I, I don't know much about this. Uh, I haven't done a ton of research in it. I just know that it is, uh, you know, doing something in regards to layer twos, very, very primitive amount of knowledge here. And this is not how I usually invest, but I'm not buying it yet. I'm just looking at the charts to make a decision on where the leaders are. And Baloo uh, just admitted to Luna being a decent, decent. I think, people. <laughs> uh, no, I think what I'm saying is I don't just buy. Um, I don't buy based on fundamentals. I follow the technicals first. So I've established a leader based on these four. And uh, if I'm going to do some research on an investment, I will go and take a look at Luna. Okay. Do you know anything about Luna? I know nothing. Uh, look, I'm, I'm going I'm to stick my hand up and say I know very little about it. But uh, because of that, on yeah. tomorrow's show, I will do some fundamental analysis of Luna. How about that? Perfect. Sounds great. There you go. Now I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm counting on you, Sean. <laughs> I'll nail it, mate. I'll nail it. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've actually had one of the people from that project on this channel. Um, but yeah, I don't know why that one has sort of slipped through my my radar. But yeah, tomorrow I will review Lunar. So the chart All is right. telling. Well, why don't you explain to the audience from a, from a, a technical analysis point of view why you've said what you've just said? Yeah, so basically, you know, we're looking at structures that have all-time highs and we're looking at their reactions and how they're behaving past their reaction. So there's a few, why don't we take a few notes here? You know what, eh, I don't wanna ruin my chart on Matic there. So we'll place a line at the all time high. We'll place a line at the all time high. We'll place a line at the all time high. And we'll place a line at the all time high. So uh, based on all time high breaks, Matic lagging, Adam, kind of halfway back up. Uh, polka dot, similar location, kind of a little further down. And Luna overtaking and now testing. So, you know, for support and uh, resistance, Luna's kind of, you know, it's leading, it's doing better than a lot of the other ones. Uh, another area that I like to look at for a breakout is just after the, the move down, draw a line where the resistance is. So you can see how we spent some time under here, and then we finally broke that out and headed up. You can see that we have that similar structure here with Matic still below. So we haven't broken through the resistance on Matic. We haven't, uh, we broke above the resistance in Polkadot, but we're unable to hold above as a result of that shakeout. And uh, with, um, Cosmos, um, we got above and we're holding above. So uh, in order of market urgency, as far as what investors are looking at, fourth place goes to Matic, uh, third place goes to Polkadot, second place goes to Adam, and first place goes to Luna. Okay. Very interesting. All right. Well, uh, I've got a sleepless night coming up to, uh, to present on Luna tomorrow, haven't I? <laughs> 
<laughs> Figure it out. What's going on? Uh, I know a little bit about oh. Cosmos. Um, I know that they're working on cross-chain atomic swaps and some other interesting yeah, stuff. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, integrating. Exactly. I've, their premise is they're, yeah. they're sort of that um, that that bridge, uh, the the bridge of blockchains, is my understanding. I've actually had the one of the founders um, of Cosmos on, on, on the channel. Um, I'll stick a link below uh, for people watching this uh, that aren't watching live, obviously. Um, really interesting interview. He's actually the guy that invented uh, decentralized applications, uh, and he's a key player in this project. Hmm. Which you know, for such a long time, it was also not on my radar. I interviewed him about a year ago, and it's it hasn't done much. Um, but I, I, I'm hearing a hell of a it lot. It had of some. About it. it had some sneaky sneaky rallies. It's had some yep. sneaky rallies here and there. Yeah, it's had some pretty nice price appreciation oh, from time right. to time. The last, the last major breakout got us, uh, well, I guess nothing crazy, actually, 240%. The fact that that's not crazy is crazy in and of itself, I guess, <laughs> if you're in crypto. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, I heard, uh, I, I, I saw an ad today for uh, some 10-year treasury bonds here in New Zealand. Uh, so you're basically having to lock up your cash for, for 10 years in you know, a safe government investment. For a whopping three right. percent. Uh, now, just once oh, again, and I, I've, I've said this a million times, but what you have to understand, people, is that interest rates—the real interest rate—is actually bet somewhere between twenty and thirty percent. So, if you're locking up your money at a three percent interest rate, you're losing money, and in, in, in effect, your money's kind of worth nothing after five or six years. So, you yeah. know. The, uh... It's kind of uh, on that point. Um, it's very interesting because, uh, you know, a lot of these exchanges are offering lending now. You can you can stake your coins and receive a yield, um, you know, in excess of four to six percent. Uh, Coinbase is trying to do that. And they are communicating with the SEE in regards to compliance and, you know, hey, you know, we want to be very transparent. We want to work with you. So this is what we want to do. How do we do it? And the SEE has now, you know, they want to sue them <laughs> without providing any clarity as to what is going on. They think that uh, these loans that they're providing are securities, which doesn't make any sense. And uh, they're just trying to get some clarity. They refuse to communicate and they're ready to, to sue Coinbase for offering a service that effectively, you know, is lending that is in competition with the banks. Um, and it's because banks are freaking old, dumb technology, but it's money. So there's power there. And people don't want to give up that power because there's a lot of it. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's when you put your money in a bank and into a high interest savings account, um, you know, you're paying the, the teller, you're paying the financial advisor, you're paying for the building that they're in, you're paying for the, the fat cats and their, their inflated, uh, you know, executive salaries, you're paying for those massive banking structures in downtown city, you know, name the city. Um, DeFi eliminates all of that. It eliminates the buildings. It eliminates the jobs because all it is is a ledger. And for and me, all it is, is matching why... a buyer to a seller. Yeah, and for me, Baloo, and this so you is can offer I'm worried about DeFi because I think that's where we will see regulators really, really go after those people because you know everyone they knows how do politicians get elected? They're elected because they've got a bigger marketing budget and their rival politician. Uh, when they're finally elected, they then have to do what these people that lent them the money to get elected want. Uh, and our existing yeah. financial institutions are, they're the main players there. So, you know, for me, uh, part of the reason why, well, not part of the reason, all of the reason why the majority of my stack is in Bitcoin and Ethereum is because Bitcoin is truly decentralized. It can't be shut down. It'll always be there regardless of what any politician attempts to do to regulate it. They can't. And I love that. Uh, Ethereum 
um, also has been uh, through the US courts. It's been declared a, co a commodity. It's taxed as such. So there's case law around it. It's not going to uh, be shut down or sued. And also I'm privy to a hell of a lot that is happening in the traditional financial world and how they are integrating and using the Ethereum network. So as opposed to, you know, taking punts on some of this other stuff that there is a door for regulators to knock on, um, you know, it, 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 there's a lot of risk, uh, especially around the DeFi space, in my opinion. NFTs are another one that I feel comfortable with. Um, they're, you know, they're one off, they're pieces of art, they're, they're not securities. Uh, I'm confident in saying that. Once again, yeah. not financial advice, but I'm pretty damn confident in saying that. So it's another space that I, I'm confident to invest in. Uh, the gaming space is, is my main focus. Uh, uh, there's just a huge amount of adoption. Um, you know, we're, we're moving value around all over the world. I, I'm, I'm, you know, we're building communities in all sorts of countries. You're doing exactly the same thing. Uh, that, that to me is what I get the most joy from by far uh, in this space. Uh, but, you know, from an investment thesis, um, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum and uh, gaming, gaming projects, that's that's where that's where my money's going for those reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Anything to add to uh, those comments? And maybe we'll uh, we'll have a look at what the, the community are saying. Do you have any questions for us? Yeah. people? Yeah, I think I'll also add that, you know, this is just further cementing this whole notion that we're going to have this separate economy, we're going to have this separate existence, uh, you know, the regulators are going to try and regulate DeFi where they can, and where they can regulate DeFi is with projects like Celsius, you know, stopping Coinbase from offering lending, they go to the exchange, because that's the only place that they can go. You can't sue a DAO, you can't sue uh, a line of code that exists on the internet that's community driven that's global there is going to be a sub economy you may have regulators saying that it is illegal for you as a citizen to use these products but you know there's a lot of shit that's illegal out there that people continue to use um there's going to be this separate economy that exists now having said that you know do take into very serious consideration what that means for you and potentially your family if you are going to be interacting with this stuff because you know if you don't want to be in the crosshairs of the law then yeah you can't use Aave you can't use compound I mean I, we're getting ahead of ourselves here you know there's there's nothing established yet but um, you know there's a big big problem here there's a huge problem with the banking system and how big it is and how predatory it is and we've found a solution there's a better way it's right here it works you want to try mm -hmm. it it works and you know it's going to scare the shit out of people it's going to scare the shit out of some very powerful people and they are going to throw everything at killing it so yep. you know we can be very excited about what's going to happen here in the future and we can be like oh my cryptocurrency is going to be worth this much but uh don't forget that, uh, you know, if you can't handle the emotional volatility of some of this stuff, um, you know, there is there is an element of activism that's here. So if you're not an activist, if you are by nature not an activist, then, you know, enjoy your games, have uh, enjoy your gains, have your stop loss and wait till the party ends. But, uh, you know. yeah, look, I agree. I totally agree with you. You know, you uh, you did a show uh, a couple of months back where you, you it was brilliant, actually. You know, you were talking about these two. Uh, sort of sectors of crypto, one, one that will be the regulated world of crypto uh, and the other, you know, the unregulated, the Wild West. And, you know, anyone watching this now is in a wonderful position to learn how to straddle both of those. Um, you know, that's going to be an important skill to have. Uh, the issue with, with technology is, is uh, for regulators is always that the, the tech just moves so much faster than they can actually pass yeah. a law. You know, some law, if you look at the SEC. It's on an exponential exponential curve too like yeah, exactly they're I mean, never going to catch up <laughs> yeah i mean the, cla the, the classic crypto scam uh which was bitconnect uh you know that's going back nearly five years now but they were only just being prosecuted now so you know the the the, the, the sec is actually quite a small department believe it or not uh and i'm sure they've got a very long list of of people to get to um but you know sort of zooming back out of, of really what i'm saying here is the macroeconomic picture here 
people is that we are just printing money and it hasn't slowed down. It's, it's actually terrifying. And I think this is lost on so many people because things seem to be good. Um, you know, you, you, you literally don't have a lot of people sort of rushing back to, to, to jobs or, or whatever after, after, you know, even coming out of lockdown with COVID. Uh, things, it's, it's all fake. You know, we're, we're, we're going to go off a cliff with this money printing. Effectively, the, the gap between rich and poor is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Why is that? Because scarce assets, things like property, those people that are already on that ladder, so property has to keep up with the, effectively the, the cash rate, the interest rate. And that's moving, uh, you know, as I say, around 20%. Hence, you're seeing these massive uh, increases in the value of property. So the rich are getting richer. That's, that's, that's fact. Uh, people that are in salary jobs, you are the ones losing. You know, if you, you, you're going off, you're working eight hours, uh, effectively, you're losing about half an hour or whatever it is uh, a year and, and your value. Um, it, this is an insane situation, but for all of you watching, you are well ahead of those rich people because you're involved in the land grab in the digital world. That's what's going on here. You're going to be the 1%. You know, you're that early. So the fact that you're getting in there, you're playing these NFT games, you're building an asset base, you're, you're, you're getting a revenue, you're learning how to, to, to invest that in, in other projects, you know, your future is bright, you know. So what might seem a very gloomy situation right now is actually the complete opposite. If you're watching this show, you're really, really early and you're in a wonderful position to set yourself up for life. Would you agree with that, Baloo? Yeah. And we're not even, you know, we're being involved in crypto at any capacity, regardless of investment, I think is going to be favorable for anybody. But, you know, specifically speaking to the play to earn crowd and how they're interacting with smart contracts and how they know how to custody funds on a wallet and how, you know, they get creative with moving money cross borders. That's a skill and it's going to be a very valuable skill. Um, so you have you're exposed to a space that has a, a likelihood of seeing asset appreciation and you're learning skills that are going to be in demand in the future. So, yeah, I think it's yes. a no brainer. Very true. So um, any comments on the, on the gaming space in general, obviously both of us are heavily involved uh, in Axie. You seeing anything else? Uh, I know a lot of the audience today are uh, from our play to earn community. Are you seeing anything else that's sort of tickling your fancy as we say? No, firm no. And I won't even look at it at this point. Uh, game development takes way longer than, the, than what I anticipate for the duration of the price cycle. I am, you know, I need to stick with the models that I have in place in, in terms of a price cycle until those become invalidated. So as far as I'm concerned, we probably have a price cycle that will go to the end of this year to maybe, maybe the end of Q1 next year. That's my price model. And when it breaks, I'll embrace it. But until that happens, no. And game development takes years. Axie took, you know, I, I joined, I got into Axie Infinity, like what, two years later? And then, you know, I made a bunch of money in Axie Infinity. So you don't need to be at the ground level. If you are looking at these games as investments, you're in the wrong market environment for investment long term, because there's going to be some sort of, typically speaking, Historically speaking, through all of existence of markets, through all of mankind, there's been these, you know, downside moves. So um, I think that it's going to be, there's going to be a bear market and, uh, you know, anything new is just very flashy, slick trailers and trying to sell you on stuff that, uh, you know, is years down the road. And mm. I've proved to myself that you can show up years down the road and still be good yeah i agree i mean you mentioned star atlas did you actually invest some some money in that yeah they, i saw that they're selling a uh a spaceship for 150 bucks so i bought one okay i don't care about 150 bucks <laughs> fair enough fair enough but yeah I'll i mean I, 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 yeah the the issue with the gaming world is you know some some of the token prices that these things have gone through the roof but yet they are just trailers token uh, prices and, 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 and asset prices 
and there's for that no reason, game. For that reason, man, I, I do like Nine Chronicles. Uh, there, there is a community there. Um, I, I, I think they're, you know, they 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 took it to market well after the game uh, was was created. So I think the gameplay will will only improve. I think they got the mobile version coming out from a price point, and this isn't financial advice, people, but obviously we've seen uh, a lot of tokens that were earned by the miners uh, and in-game play have flooded onto the market in the last couple of days. And I, to be honest, I'm, I'm kind of surprised the price uh, held up like it did. Uh, so for me, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually looking to, to increase the stake in that. I like the game. I know the community. I know who's invested in it. Uh, and another one uh, that has sparked my interest because I like the game um, is Rev. Uh, they're, they're building out their, their play to earn model um that's there that's in the now growing fast well funded uh so those three uh for me you know axie uh rev uh and nine chronicles are, are for, as far as gaming goes is, is really where my focus is at at the moment uh, but we're looking at a ton of others so uh if there's anyone out there at the moment watching that you you think there is a game that we should be looking at please let us know and we will uh look at the chart and also uh, the fundamentals. Uh, now, given this is primarily a technical analysis show, anyone in the audience, if there's a chart that you can beg Baloo to, to bring up, you've got about five minutes to let us know before we wrap up. So uh, drop that in the comments for us. But Baloo, yeah, let's just have more of a, a general chat on, on life. How's it all going for you, buddy? It's going pretty good. Yeah, I've decided yep. to do uh, detox my body a little bit, and I'm, I haven't had coffee for two days, which I haven't done in, um, well, probably two years now. So, um, how many cups were you drinking a day? I uh, usually two. Uh, oh God! At, at minimum one. Minimum I one. Have I have two in the first thirty um, minutes of my day. <laughs> and another, and I'm being more con I'm being <laughs> conservative. I'm being conservative. There are days where I'll have like a whole pot of coffee. Um, mm. But yeah, you know, it's just I don't like to feel as though I'm dependent upon anything. So I decided it's time for a detox. So I'm a little foggy. Um, but I'll try and snap out of it and do some some analysis. And of course, the market dumps when I'm foggy. But you know, it's, <laughs> it is what it is. And I'm not too worried about the long term here, I'm I'm convicted of more upside. Uh, I think we're going to complete our typical market cycle. Okay, uh, Luigi is suggesting my DeFi pet, Dragonary and Emon. Um, Luigi, I uh, potentially will get the guys from my DeFi pet on. I've had the founder uh, of the Cardia Chain uh, blockchain on the show before. I really like him. It's an amazing team. The my reservations on something like that is you know it, it, it's its own uh, blockchain, it's its own ecosystem, which makes you know the interoperability uh, a bit more difficult. But what I would say is, as far as Cardia Chain goes, and uh, the, the huge amount of games coming onto that blockchain at the moment, uh, they're all out of Vietnam, and Vietnam has got the fastest growing uh, rate of in uh, of crypto adoption uh, of any country. So. Uh, I have held that token for, for quite a while and I'm actually looking to, to bump it up a bit, but I will say that I'm generally not a fan of uh, things that aren't interoperable uh, with the Ethereum virtual machine. So, uh, yep, if you want to hear more about DeFi Pet, we'll certainly look at that for you. Uh, anything else, people, any charts you'd like us to look at? I guess not. We can just hear a uh, an owl singing in your background, Blue. Or is that here? <laughs> I think it's. I think it's here. Okay. Yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Absolutely. Okay. All right. Um, any any closing thoughts or comments, Blue, before we wrap it up? Um. No, I think we've covered a lot, you know, uh, just it's an exciting space. Don't don't lose track of what's going on here. It decide, be honest with yourself. Who are you like? What what is what is your investment thesis? Are you an investor? Are you a trader? Because they're very different. There's very different tactics with both. 
Um, and if you are an investor, well, you know, you got to get that muscle memory going. You got to you got to learn that these are the days that you add to the positions that interest you the most. Um, mm. And if you're a trader, then I hope you had a stop and it got you out unless you're doing the macro stuff. <laughs> Yeah, this is true. Um, I, I, as I say, I, I, I trade with between five and ten percent of my overall portfolio, um, but I don't actually have stop losses on anything else. You know, I, I, my investment thesis is these are long term plays for me, uh, and I've been right on all of them so far. Uh, I don't have a loser. Um, so that's where I sit. Someone is asking about Alluvium. Uh, Alluvium went so, from $36 back in July up to about 550 last time I looked. Uh, but they announced just a few days ago that their uh, launch of the game is delayed. So uh, maybe let's have a quick look at the Alluvium price chart. Was did that announcement affect that, I wonder? Um, obviously, I, I would imagine its price chart is probably down today. <laughs> Let's see, can you, so alluvium, I mean, let me pull it up here. No, it's not surprisingly. Oh wow! But no. what I don't like is uh, alluvium's just too speculative for me. Um, well, they don't have a game yet. I, they don't have a game, and I don't like that. So you know, if you're a trader, what you're looking for is a break of this flag. We have a bull flag here. This is on the Ethereum pair, by the way, uh, because there is no USD pair. They just listed on. Uh, OKX, but there's no pair yet. Uh, there's no uh, there's no chart. It's just one candle. Um, so yeah, you're gonna want to get a break above uh, 0.162 ETH per alluvium. Uh, all you can do is stake it. So that's where the demand is coming from for this rally. Uh, people are buying it so that they can stake it. Um, the game's probably a, a long ways away, and when you go into their, uh, you know, Discord and stuff, you can't even get, you know, visuals of the gameplay. Like it's not, it's not hard to show some samples of gameplay. So if they don't even have samples of gameplay, they're a hell of a long ways away from releasing anything. Anything. So um, of course, there's a delay. You know, they don't have anything, in my opinion. Um, but yeah. You know, if it breaks out and people speculate, you can make money on people's speculation. But as far as the fundamentals of investment, it's a path yeah. for me. It was it was hyped on all the you know the big hype crypto channels. Uh, you know, the this will be a hundred x tomorrow channels. Um, be careful right. where you get your information, people. You know, find 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 communities where you know. There's a track record. Go back six months, see what people were saying. Did it did it come off? Um, you know, some of the productions right. out there are, are, are pretty damn slick these days. Um, yeah, I, I I don't want to slag off other YouTube channels other than to say, you know, watch a bunch of them and and, and find uh, what what who you trust and who's got a great community to to be part of. But yeah, Alluvium just popped up absolutely freaking everywhere and it was hyped, uh, but no game. So. Yeah, that's my thoughts on Alluvium. Anything else, community? Give us your questions. Give us your requests before uh, before we let Baloo go. This is that uh, you're, you're nearly out of time here. So let us know if you've got something else you want us to have a look at for you. Uh, and I also have to remind you that if you have not subscribed to Baloo's channel, do it. We're going to try and convince him to come on here uh, a, a bit more. I'm uh, going to be having a chat with him on a few ideas. Um, but uh, he, you know, what, what are you, five times a week? You're you're putting content out? Oh, no. No? Barely three. Oh, really? <laughs> I, was okay. supposed to, uh, I was supposed to launch a video today. Um, but uh, all the community is getting is just me on here. So usually oh, okay. three days a week. And I'll 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 post the odd random video here and there just to piss off the Cardano fans. And well, we should probably multi-stream as well. I'm just I, joking. I, I, <laughs> oh, hang on! You know what? I cut you completely off when you were bringing up the uh, the ADA chart, the Cardano charts. Uh, and your uh, can you also please share your Cardano meme, which I nearly pissed my pants when I saw that. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Where? How do I pull that up? 
You've up, no, you upset you upset it. some of uh, I've, I've got a uh, sort of a, a, a very small crypto meetup, but uh, yeah, the boys have they've all become uh, massive kind of <laughs> fans. <laughs> And you know what? It's rightfully so. I mean, Cardano has gone up in price quite a bit. And, you know, the biggest pusher of a positive narrative is, you know, positive price action. So it's not at all surprising. Um, you know, people are really excited for the future potential of Cardano. But, you know, going back to the the thesis of just network effect and network adoption, um, you know, it's just there's nothing there right now. And I've learned, I have learned most notably this cycle is that I don't need to be at the ground floor and I feel a lot safer in making larger investments in projects that uh, are not at the ground floor and actually show, you know, workable, usable products that are, that have adoption that people are using, not just the Cardano fanboys, but that they're actually sucking in new users uh, for the use cases. Um, then I'll, I'll take a look. Like I'm not anti Cardano. If Cardano does something that, piques my interest i'll be there i'll be there and i'll be looking it's just they haven't uh they haven't presented enough for me just yet so um mm. that's where i'm at let me pull up this meme it's not even it's just a picture of me but i thought i'd slap on a hey, little you're, you're, you're a brave man and and antagonizing <laughs> other communities as i learned about two years ago uh is a dangerous thing in crypto blues <laughs> There it is. Cardano bears watching the smart contract launch fail. Be like, we don't, we don't, we don't <laughs> see it. We don't, we don't see it. Oh, you don't. Oh, you don't see it. No. Where do I? How do I get back? Oh, <laughs> turn it into I, an NFT. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm sure some of those cashed up uh, Cardano people will buy it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I'll, I'll mint a bunch of these. <laughs> Um, on that I just, note, uh, I just wish that I could sell it on the Cardano NFT marketplace, but I can't. Oh, uh, sorry, guys. I'm going to have to do it on ETH. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to pay a shit ton of gas fees to get it. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, just uh, just. To, uh, but yeah. yeah, you know, back on the back on the chart, back okay. on the chart. You know, this is this is nice i actually like to see this you know i was getting really really bearish on this extension i was you know making a bunch of videos that were just infuriating people just talking about you know a warning of a correction now the correction came in the form of a market-wide correction but there's people in cardano that don't care you know there there are people that are riding the hype they're riding the anticipation it's the buy the rumor sell the news structure that we were seeing and they've left they've been flushed out so you know it's the best case scenario for you know the true cardano holders the people that really believe in the progress of this price appreciation it's good it, get them out they don't need to be there they were there for the wrong reasons in the first place anyways just flush them out so we've gotten that now and we're sitting on this area of support near the previous that's bias climax that's a dangerous dangerous area right there uh, yeah, if we can hold support, we're good. If we don't, then, you know, it's going to get pretty ugly pretty fast because there wasn't a lot of support built. Um, but, you know, this is typically an area where where support holds. We test the previous high and we hold it as support. Um, mm -hmm. If we do that, it's going to be really bullish for the Cardano price structure. It's going to be really, really bullish. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, that's price and fundamentals don't go hand in hand. That's why you can release the, the most fundamentally profound things in the bear market and the price keeps going down and the inverse is true as well. You know, it's yeah. price cycles are separate. Very true. Very true. Okay. Uh, just a, a few community announcements. We were, uh, making uh, jokes about turning Baloo's meme into an NFT, but uh, we're gonna we're slightly altering what we're doing here on the hard forking channel. We want to make it uh, a bit more about crypto culture, uh, and with that in mind, obviously, as as many of you know, uh, you know the the uh, the gaming space is is very much our focus. Um, but we're a creative bunch, so we're we're gonna start creating our own NFTs. We're gonna walk you through the the process of how that's done. Maybe you want to get into that yourself. We're talking to some really interesting uh, companies at the moment on the NFT music front, uh, on the art front. 
but you know we're going to do it ourselves so we actually want the community to come in and create some of this stuff with us uh we've also got uh, a number of jobs that we will be recruiting and that will happen exclu- exclusively from our community uh we're looking to hire as, as many of you as possible obviously a ton of you are our scholars um but yeah we're, we're taking on a writer some community leads there's there's more to come uh we really appreciate your involvement uh, in this community you know we really view this channel as a community we're not trying to make content to to go out to a quarter of a million people uh that's not us uh we're, we are a community and uh as such we will grow together um i for some legal reasons i I can't talk about how uh equity positions will look but we will talk to many of you privately about that uh in the discord so if you haven't joined our discord yet make sure you do uh if you haven't liked this video so other uh, uh, another quarter of a million people can find out about it would you please do that now not that we want them (laughs) but give it a like send the Uh, moon boys over yeah moon boys no thanks uh (laughs) Um, and also there is a link to Baloo's channel in the show notes, people. So show him some love and make sure you subscribe to his channel. Appreciate it. Um, the Hex Machine. The Hex Machine is back with us. Hello, Hex Machine. Uh, man, we're going to have to have a look at the Hex chart, Baloo. Good Lord. All right, reluctantly so. A lot of money. <laughs> you know, it just... I don't know. Oh, it fucking goes up. Like, what do you what down. do you want? Well, I mean, everything went down. So it keeps going up. Hex keeps going up, but I will never buy Hex. And uh, you know, I have my own reasons, but uh, you know, I'm happy. I can't be in everything. This chart just keeps going up. It's at a parabolic curve. Um, what happens when you know? people take profits and start staking and maybe Richard Hart wants to, you know, exit. I don't know. I'm just, (laughs) what I would recommend is, you know, if you're not familiar with taking a look at uh, how smart contracts look on the block explorer, go and look at the block explorer for this project because there's funny business on the block explorer. Please explain what, what, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, well, I'm coins holding? just coins just coins just disappear when they're staked they don't actually go anywhere they're burned they're not actually staked they're burned and then when your contract is over you get new minted coins that's weird I don't understand that I don't trust uh, Mr. Hart I don't trust the the way the protocol works just from my experience at looking at the block explorer and you know, I don't like it the way that it's marketed. But if you know how to trade, if you know how to exit things, I also don't like how I can't place a stop loss because it's not on any exchange. So I can't place a stop well, it's loss. A term on deposit this. account. I mean, it's it's kind of his whole pitch is that it's the first sort of term deposit account in crypto, and and you know maybe he's pulled that off. Maybe and that's the other thing too that I don't. That's the other thing too that I don't like is uh, you know certificate of deposit is something that banks do where they take your money and then they go invest it. He's not doing anything. You know, this is just sitting here. So the whole certificate of deposit notion is flawed because the money actually doesn't leave because it's supposed to be staked. So it's not doing anything. So it's not investing in other projects to provide a yield for yield for its users. It doesn't make sense. Feels weird. Chart goes up. People make money. You do you. Okay. Limit Blue, risk. I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him back <laughs> on the channel, and we'll, we'll we'll definitely have you on uh, to to throw a few questions at him. Uh, I, I think he's been oh, he's God. been on before. He's actually one of our most watched. Yeah. Shot. Uh, he's he's one hell of a character, that's for sure. Unfortunately, uh, the way that he's marketing himself now, I think I mentioned this last week. I'm just man, oh man, Ugh, it's awful. <laughs> it's what. The, he's you know, showing off his quarter million watches viewers and his Ferrari, <laughs> but you know, he's got uh, yeah, that all, yeah. his audience likes that. I mean, I can't complain about it. I, I got 250 bucks worth of, of hex. Uh, and not that I like to talk about money, but yeah, 250 bucks is, is uh, man, it's it's turned into quite a bit. And uh, since November, 
So, uh, look, I can't complain. Uh, would I buy it right now? Uh, if I was tuning in to see him for the first time and the sort of content he's currently pu putting out, fucking no. Uh, will I break my stake in Hex? Also, fuck no. No, I mean, you know, I got a, I got an amazing entry on it. I'm just going to hold it. I ain't selling it. Yeah. Yeah, if I was to come at this fresh, I would, first of all, have a low position size. You know, this is not something, there's just too many unknowns as far as like, you know, large positions, which is usually my style. I need to trust. I, I don't mess around with small positions. I do large positions with big swings. Yeah. So, you know, the trust comes into it. I'll have a small position. That's how I limit risk. I can't place a stop loss. So my typical stop loss amount will then become my position. So if I'm accustomed to losing, you know, $2,500 on a stop loss, then, you know, that's my position size is my stop loss. And yeah. uh, that would be it. No staking. I would not stake it. That's just me. You know, I want. You're to, not a fan uh, of staking full stop though, are you? It's not. No, I don't stake anything. I don't stake anything. It's probably why I don't like Cardano as well. <laughs> it's just the only thing you can do. Well, if the only thing you can do is steak, then I'll pass. <laughs> More of a burger guy. I've got a bigger stake in burger tokens. Than burger steak. tokens. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. There you go. What, uh, what, 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 what's what's been your what, what's been your best and worst uh, investment or uh, play in the crypto space in your your entire time in it? Oh man, best. Well, I've ha I've had a couple best. I don't know if I've ever actually like measured the performance, but one of my earliest best was Verge back in the uh, back in the previous cycle. I made just stupid amounts on Verge. Um, another best one is is still going, and that's Axie Infinity. Um, another one that treated me very well was you know Bitcoin and Ethereum and. Uh, um, what was kind of one that just went nuts on me? Avalanche. I don't know. There's just random ones. I, I trade in and out. What was your much, first you ever know. crypto purchase? Bitcoin. Really? Okay. Yeah. It was actually my first introduction to crypto was, uh, my paycheck in Bitcoin. So that's how I entered the space. Mine's embarrassing. What is it? Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell well, me. Well, it did me a big favor. It did me a really big favor. I uh, I knew some guys that were just appeared to be making an absolute fortune, and as it turns out, they were. Uh, this is early, I don't know, it was sometime at 2.16. Uh, and they uh, basically, I, you know, I did a, a, a deal with these guys, and this is kind of typical of how a lot of funds work. They keep 20% of of your gains as the fee manage the crypto for you they had custody of it so you just effectively give them the money into a fund um i thought i was going into a fund i i went in half cocks you know i total fomo uh and it turned out that i uh all i had was ripple um so i uh basically sat down over the next week and researched absolutely everything about ripple and you know, this is why when I hear people talking about Ripple being this freaking amazing thing, it was basically some guys that, in their exact words, it was three dudes that you can probably find the video on the internet. They were presenting to pretty much an empty room and they were like, well, you know, we were trying to figure out what to do with, with this code. And it was like chucking spaghetti on the ceiling and seeing what stick. We thought it might've been like an ear, you know, a rewards type thing, ear miles. Uh, but yeah, that, that turned into, uh, into Ripple now a multi-billion dollar company. Um, but then, you know, I'm like, when I dug into it and the guys that had sort of got me into it were like explaining mining to me and very quickly figured out that Ripple isn't, you know, wasn't proof of work blockchain. Um, and, you know, I had to fight tooth and nail to, to actually get my money back. And it was at that point that I went, holy shit, you know, there's just nothing out here. There was no, barely any crypto media at that point. Hence me starting hard forking. So I became a hardcore Bitcoin maximalist. And, you know, I started a website in 2016 and hard forking was just a website uh, up until early 2018. So, of course, I launched a video channel as the bull market starts. 
<laughs> Sorry, the bear right. market. Uh, so yeah, Ripple was was uh, my first crypto. Very, and I sold out of that uh, in a week. Uh, and I bought a, I think I bought a Bitcoin for like five hundred bucks. Um, and that was my my learning. And then uh, it was Stellar Lumens was uh, my big winner in the two seventeen bull run. Uh, which I think was actually the best performing of all cryptos in, in 2017. I uh, haven't really looked at it since. I uh, don't think it's done too much. But that was kind of my story. And uh, my 2020 story was all about Axie Infinity. I think uh, the Hard Forking Channel was literally one of the first to the punch on that. Uh, we built a wonderful community about that, and we'll, we'll continue to do that. Uh, but we're obviously looking to to, to really really find the, the the best and brightest people in, in the in the gaming space uh, promote their 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 projects bring their offerings to our community uh, and effectively grow a, a play to win community that's 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 really our big focus now um, I don't see Axie infinity falling over anytime soon I think their war chest is so damn big that the innovation we'll see out of that project uh, will, 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 will be impressive. I mean, if you've got that much money, how are you going to lose? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we're going to see those peaks and troughs as, as they tweak the, the tokenomics, the business model. Um, oh, God damn it. It's one of the hard forkers calling in the middle of a live show. Jesse, you're obviously not watching. <laughs> But yeah, that's my crypto story, Baloo. Um, and you know, it's just amazing to think here we are. We'll, we'll, we'll look back on this in five years and, and realize that even in, in 21, we're we're still so early, we're still niche. Yeah. Uh, but but I think that's going to yeah. change. You know. Yeah. So everyone here, all of you watching right now, you're you're early. Um, you know, do your own research, but also reach out to these communities that you're part of, you know, utilize people that have been here a bit longer, join Baloo's community. We hope to have him integrated more into ours, but, you know, reach out to the other people in our community. Um, we're here to help. We're here to help. That's what this is all about. On that note, thank you, sir, so much for imparting your knowledge as always. We'll uh, we'll see you Very back here next Wednesday help. for the for the live show and uh, yeah I'm gonna have a chat with Blue in the in the coming days see if we can get him a bit more involved in what we're doing here on this channel I know uh, many of you are big fans of his uh, and yeah look most importantly thank you uh, community uh, congratulations to the winners of the Nine Chronicles tokens I am sending those to you as soon as I'm done here. Uh, we'll see you back here tomorrow with Jesse and Leanne, and we'll be live on YouTube and Twitch on Friday with a, uh, a revamped show that I think uh, I think many of you are, are really going to enjoy. So make sure you come and check that out and hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell button as well, people, so that uh, when we do put content out, you, uh, you know. Uh, so thanks so much. Cheers, Baloo. We'll, uh, 